The Washington Post reported in 2015 that while the United States has 5% of the world's population, it has 22% of the reported prison population. Between 0.7 and 1% of all Americans are incarcerated at any given time. Thus, for many Americans, the harsh realities of prison life are directly or indirectly a significant factor in their lives. But what's it like elsewhere? How different is the plight of an inmate overseas or elsewhere on the American continent? Where would a prisoner have it best? Where would it likely be worst? Where are policies in place that would be unthinkable anywhere else. Well, it's time for a worldwide inspection to figure things out. Number 10. China's Humanizing and Dehumanizing Guards Prisons in the People's Republic of China are notorious for their harsh treatments of inmates, and they generally work in arduous conditions. But there are many reported attempts at prison reform. One of the most interesting came out in 2019 when SixthTone.com reported that Shanghai's Nanhui Prison was experimenting with having its guards offer counseling services to inmates. There's a particular emphasis on having prisoners vocalize their mental health problems to the guards, although only for the more extreme extreme cases instead of for the general population. One, Chen Fulin, said that he offered counseling to the four to six most troubled prisoners out of the 10 to 12 under his watch at any time. If increasing the psychological toll of people already performing a difficult job and having people open themselves up emotionally to many people they would describe as their natural enemies seems problematic, it's perhaps unsurprising that Chinese prison guards have been forthcoming with their work issues. In 2020, a new Sixth Tone article reported that 300-hour months are increasingly common. Security cameras actually made this worse for many guards, as many themselves will be checked on security cameras instead of being able to take short breaks, although they do answer the age-old question of who watches the watches. To deal with these strains, there are experiments that promise to lighten the load while threatening to take away the human element. In 2019, even as Nanhui was experimenting with more humane guards, Yan Cheng Prison installed artificial intelligence monitors in literally every cell block to look for unusual behavior and monitor the general health of prisoners. It also cut down on the risk of bribery, which was a particular problem as inmates there tended to be more affluent. Such is the duality of the world's largest police state. Number 9. Brazil's Overtly Prejudicial System It's common criticism of penal systems around the world that they are harsher on minorities. For example, in the US, no one will be surprised to learn that Latinos are 1.3 times more likely to be incarcerated than Caucasians, and African Americans are about 5 times more likely, though these rates have been declining in recent years. Yet Brazil takes this to a level where it's written law at least as far as education is concerned. As reported by the Christian Science Monitor in August 2020, Brazilian law explicitly states that people who have been arrested and are awaiting trial that have college degrees are to be put in private cells. They're even required to be put under house arrest. That might not sound as great, but considering the violent gang presence in general populations for Brazilian jails, which in many cases are so overcrowded that they are kept at literally double their design capacity, it can literally be a matter of life or death. Number 8. Television-friendly Norwegian prisons Prison cells with television sounds like something out of a low-key science fiction story or how a social critic would describe our modern homes. For Norwegian inmates, it's likely reality, at least to those sent to the Holden Maximum Security Facility. Built in 2010, inmates permitted a flat screen in their cells on the condition that they provided themselves. They're also allowed private showers, but presumably they don't have to bring their own towel. If that seems like it's going infuriatingly soft on prisoners, it's still in keeping with Holden's general policy and the broader Norwegian government position regarding incarceration. This is a country where the maximum prison length is 21 years, and the design for this particular prison includes covering the concrete outer wall in greenery. Perhaps it's not the harshness some desire in the repayment of debts to society, but it has lowered the recidivism rate, and the number of fights in Holden is unusually low. Indeed, considering that inmates in Holden are 10 times more likely to commit suicide in prison than the general population, compared to 8 times higher in America, Holden inmates present a much higher danger to themselves than they do to each other. We'll return to the subject of prison suicide later in this video. Number 7. The World's Escape Capital We at this channel have long appreciated a good story of prison escape. Looks like our best bet for more stories is Finland. While in America in 2013 there were 10.5 escapes per 10,000 prisoners, in Finland it's roughly 45 per 10,000. The reason Finland's prisoners escape so often relative to America is largely because Finland has moved to a new and staggering degree of leniency. 
Nearly one third of Finnish prisoners are in open prison, which essentially translates to people who are living free but are required to perform considerable community service at minimum wage rates while either paying rent or studying under a curriculum. Under conditions where supervision can often only be a real factor of life during trips outside the community, escape is so easy that no doubt at least a few prisoners have accidentally escaped. Reportedly, the only reason that many more don't do it is because they feel they'd have a lower quality of life while on the lam. Number six, France's suicide problem. We mentioned that the suicide rate among Norwegian prisoners was unusually high, but it's far from the highest in the world. Indeed, in 2013, it was reported that France's prisoners killed themselves at twice the rate prisoners did on average in other European countries. In 2017, it reached a level where 12.6 per 10,000 French inmates committed suicide while in prison. There are a number of factors this had been attributed to. For one, France has the second longest average length of incarceration in Europe. The number one is Azerbaijan with 31.1 months. France also has consistently been in the top three for European countries with the largest amount of overcrowding. In addition to these contributing factors, France in general has a much higher suicide rate than average, just under those of Finland, Belgium, and Eastern European nations. While France is not the worst in any one of these regards, it seems to be the confluence that is taking such a toll on its inmates. Number five, constantly closing in the Netherlands. Even with such a grim subject matter as prison, all is not bleak. In the Netherlands, the rate of incarceration has been trending downward sharply. Between 2008 and 2018, the number of annual prison sentences dropped from 42,000 to 31,000. Between 2014 and 2019, 23 Dutch prisons were closed. So severe was the lack of demand for prisons that the nation began importing prisoners from Belgium and Norway. That said, a prison shortage feels like it should be entry number one on the list of 10 problems that countries want to have. As with the other entries in this particular video, it's due to a number of factors. For one, Dutch prison sentences are so light that roughly 50% of inmates are only sentenced for one month. For comparison, the Federal Bureau of Prisons reports that 59.2% of US inmates are sentenced to 3 to 15 years. For another, Dutch courts move to favor fines over prison sentences. Additionally, there has been a massive shift to mental health and psychiatric treatments over punitive measures in recent years. There are definitely critics of the program, such as in 2019 when The Guardian reported that the Dutch police union claimed that there was an underreporting of crime. Number 4. Bolivia's Tourist Prison There are plenty of people that will compare visiting a zoo to touring a prison for fun, but apparently there are those that will take the next step in making that metaphor a literalism. In 1996, it was reported that the prison community of San Pedro, located in the city of La Paz, was allowing tourists in to see these sites or even party with the inmates. For years, this was an open secret. So open, in fact, that the lid was blown open in 2019 when a Bolivian local television production covering an incarcerated politician uncovered the flow of tourists accidentally. If you're wondering how a prison could possibly appeal to a tourist, it's in large part because San Pedro isn't a conventional collection of cells as it is a ghetto or rather a city block that got walled off. It's an unusually stratified prison as inmates are required to pay for their own quarters, which practically required the prison to charge different rates for different detention areas, some of which are practically penthouses, with San Pedro effectively making a giant joke of the Bolivian legal system, there were numerous calls to close the corrupt institution down. To date, they've all failed, and San Pedro still posts its opening and closing hours on Google. Number three, Zambia's extreme overcrowding. While economic conditions in Africa have been improving in recent years, such as the fact that in 2018, roughly 35% of the continent's roughly 1 billion people reached middle class lifestyles, and in nations such as Kenya, 60% of people had regular access to the internet, it will be a long time before the continent is no longer associated with famine, civil wars, refugees, and general hardship. Naturally, convicts are among the most vulnerable people in its nations. Those incarcerated in Zambia gained particular scrutiny after Vice President Guy Scott went on a well-publicized inspection in 2012. Guy Scott found that while the nation's 53 prisons had been intended to house roughly 5,000 prisoners, and considering that they were leftovers from when Zambia was a British colony, it could be considered a given that the facilities were not state-of-the-art even when they were built, that more than 17,000 prisoners were housed in them. Some cells were designed for one person and hold as many as 15. It was the ideal situation for outbreaks of tuberculosis, typhus, and diseases of that nature. As if that wasn't bad enough, by 2018, the number of prisoners had risen to 21,000, while the number of prisons has increased to 90. Many of them were open-air prisons where inmates were left more vulnerable to the elements. 
Number 2. Japanese Communication Restrictions Compared to Zambian prisons, Japanese prisons, which at times, such as 1994, were only at 70% capacity, might seem like paradises. Still, there are a number of more psychological torturous practices therein. The most striking is that prisoners are only allowed to talk to each other for about three hours a day during designated break and exercise periods. Also, all communication, including all material read, television, or other media consumed, must be done exclusively in Japanese. If that seems like immigrants who don't speak Japanese are being targeted for discrimination, the prison system has actually been unusually accommodating in a sense. Many prisons have separate cells that are specifically designed to more closely resemble Western prison cells to segregate prisoners, surely the least pleasant way for someone to feel like it's just at home. This can be a double-edged sword, as many foreign inmates are effectively put into default solitary confinement. Number 1. Mexican Prisons Escape Leniency It turns out that one of the most bewildering practices in a foreign prison from an American perspective is practically next door. As reported by Time magazine in 2015, if a prisoner escapes from Mexican prisons without committing violence against any of the guards or others, or if no prison personnel aid in the escape, there will be no extension to their sentence or other official punishments. The logic behind this was written in a Mexican Supreme Court ruling by Victor Castro, and as the desire for basic freedom is implicit in every person. There are similar laws in Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, and Australia. Not that Mexican prisons are any sort of kumbaya attempted utopia. There are many instances where guards can shoot escapees to kill. Best that any inmate who needs to escape a prison feels like it's in their best interest to be as non-violent in the process as possible.